Okay, welcome back. Um, this is the Jaguar I've been working on for a while, and actually it's been on hold for a while because I've been working on the Poacher Mercedes, and a lot of you have probably been, maybe, have been watching that uh, Mercedes build. And so when I started the Mercedes build, this went on hold because this I'm building for me, and the Mercedes build is for somebody else. So that means the Mercedes build is more important and takes priority. However, I wanted to take a tiny little break from that just to go over a quick update with this and to talk about three things that I found that will help me with the detailing and could also help you as well. So I just wanted to share these things with you so that if you're building the same car, you can get the same benefits from these, from these details. So if you have not seen any of this yet, I highly recommend you go back to my 1 8 Jaguar XKE build with part one. Basically, long story short, I got this kit on eBay. It was partially built, uh, maybe about half, maybe about halfway built, and I stripped it all apart and rebuilt everything, or I'm in the process of rebuilding everything. The entire frame here, all of the framework, I soldered from brass, and uh, because the original kit frame was all warped and bent and broken and just unusable, um, Scratch made a lot of details up in here. And yeah, I apologize, my lighting, I need to fix my lighting in here. But uh, Scratch built a lot of details, um, fine detailed a lot of stuff, added a lot of extra stuff. So go back and watch those. But ever since I started this build, there's been a few things that have been on the back of my mind. And one of them was decals. So when you look at like the real model, or the, the real car, uh, there should be a yellow placard here. There's a placard on the washer fluid box there. And there's just placards like here and just all over the engine and the interior. Uh, not to mention there should be a, a data plate here. Um, and I was trying to figure out, trying to come up with a way of printing all of those decals and making those, those stickers or decals myself. Well, in the meantime, I found, again on eBay... I found the 1 8 scale Trans Am, the 1 8 scale Trans Am. And normally those Trans Am kits, they go for hundreds of dollars. The ones on eBay now, they're like three or four hundred bucks. Well, I found one, again, partially built, uh, but just not very well. So I was able to get that for less than a hundred bucks with the idea, again, to strip it all down and, and detail it the way I am with this one to make it as realistic as possible, you know, to do my best to make it as realistic as I can. And one thing I noticed on that, the big eagle decal on the hood was crooked and a little bit chipped and scratched. And even if it was put on perfect, I'd have to take it off anyways because I would want to paint the car. So I went on eBay looking for decals for the Trans Am to get a new hood decal for the Trans Am. And while I was looking for decals for the Trans Am, I found decals for this, and um, this is not by Monogram. This is a third-party company, somebody that made a decal set. You get this sheet, and you get this sheet, and some of these decals, like the engine, the engine data plate like this one, they give you a piece of uh, foil to put it on um, to make it look more realistic uh, for the engine displays, instruments. They give you a piece of plastic here to put on that. And you have more than you need because you can choose with the lights on or lights off on the engine displays. But you've got the, you got, um, you can choose which Lucas battery uh, decal you want. There's the one that goes on the, uh, the heater box here. So I've got that one. Um, there's just tons, tons of stuff here. And this whole set was $35? I forget. It's been a while. I want to say 35 bucks. And they give you, they give you, it comes with this. So this is a sheet. Again, it's 1 8 Jaguar XKE decal upgrade kit. Tells you where they all go. They list them all. They tell you where they go. But there's engine, chassis, interior, like everything you need here. More than what you need. So very happy and excited to get this. Can't wait to start putting some of these on. I might not even use half of them. I'll use as much as I can. But, um... But yeah, really excited about, about using some of those, especially like this one and this one. So 
so yeah, go on eBay, just put in uh, 1 8 Jaguar XKE decal upgrade kit. Pick yourself up this set. Again, 35 bucks. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's well worth it. Now, something else, something else that I've been thinking about for the details is when you look at photos of the real car, there's a wire harness. So you've got your battery that sits here. There's a wire harness that comes around and loops around. And that loom, when you look at photos of the real car, it looks like that loom is like a woven black fabric with like blue tracers through it. And so I'm trying to figure out how can I rec how can I recreate that. So I go on eBay and I did a search for fabric covered wire, cloth covered wire, fabric insulated wire, and I found this. This is 16 gauge, 16 gauge fabric insulated wire. And when you look at this, it's it looks exactly like the loom on the real car, the, the black fabric braided with the blue strands in it. And so that'll lay in here. Um, you know, that'll lay along here like that. Now, of course, I'm going to have to poke little wires in to come out to, uh, to the tops of the bottles here, to the generator. And uh, some will come up here to the headlights and they keep going around here to the starter. Notice I have a couple of wires in here already. Those go back to the starter back there. They're way too long. They'll get cut off later. But... This is the wire loom. So again, on eBay, do a search, and I forget exactly what I searched for, but it's a 16 gauge fabric covered or fabric insulated or cloth insulated fabric. And um, and so what I'll probably do, I cut, a, I cut a piece off earlier and I, what you can do is you can pull the wire out so it's just the fabric sleeve. That way it's a little bit more flexible. You can, you can cut a slit in it and poke wires in to come out to the different equipment here. So uh, so I think this is really going to set this apart when it comes to doing the wiring. Now, the third thing that has always bugged me ever since I got this kit from day one when I first started looking at it was the hood. The kit hood. Well, it's filthy. That's the way I got it. But I never liked those louvers. You know, they don't they don't go all the way through. And I really wanted those louvers to be, you know, functional. Plus, I don't think that's right the way they look indented down, like sunken down. Something about that just doesn't look right. So I'm trying to think about, okay, how can I cut out those louvers? How can I make those louvers look right? My first thought was to take the back edge of an X-Acto blade and go in here and just start scraping through, cutting through until you work all the way through. Well, for one... That would be a lot of time. That that would be that would be hellacious trying to do all that. Second thing is, they would have to all be perfectly the same length, the same width, level, and even, or else it would look it, it would look horrible. Um, if those slots are not cut perfectly, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb, and they would just look awful. Um, so the exacto knife, I mean, it gets pretty thick going through that. That would just take forever. I'm thinking about using a Dremel tool in something, and I'm like, man, that would just that would just go bad real quick if you weren't careful. I'm sure there's people out there who could do it. I'm sure there's plenty of you watching this that would be able to manually cut through all of those and make them look good. If you can do that, then that's great. Um, you know, more power to you. I just don't think I could pull that off. So then I'm thinking about maybe I can take some thin sheets of brass and uh, like shim stock or something, cut some thin sheets and bend the corners down and solder them all together, and maybe that would do that. And I'm like, even that just sounds like a pain in the rear. So I kind of put that idea on hold for a little bit. And um, and then I was watching, um, there's a YouTuber I like watching, uh, World of Wayne. If you have not seen World of Wayne, I, I recommend you go to YouTube and uh, just watch World of Wayne. Uh, the guy's name, man... I'm drawing a blank on his name. I can't think of his name right now. Uh, he's overseas somewhere. Uh, London, Britain, I, I don't know. He's overseas somewhere. Of course, to him, I'm overseas. Um, but he's, he's, he's across the pond. But he builds a lot of uh, what's called part, man, parts works models. The way a parts work kit works, and that's not all he does. He does a lot of different stuff, but he mostly does part work kits. And 
They're made by companies like Eagle Moss. Actually, I think Eagle Moss filed for bankruptcy. I'm not sure what's going on with Eagle Moss right now. But there's also uh, Diagasi. Diagasi or Diagosi? Diagasi, I think. Uh, but Diagasi makes a 1 8 scale Jaguar. Now, these, these parts works models, the way they work is they go by a prescription. Um, not prescription. Subscription? Subscription or prescription? Subscription. Hold on a second. This is a prescription. This is a subscription. This is a long story. This, I got something cool to tell you. So I'll get back to this in a minute. Let me show you this. Check this out. This is Fine Scale Modeler. And uh, you'll notice the date, November 2003. You might be wondering, why am I hanging on to a magazine from 2003? Well, let me show you. In this magazine, there is a picture of a Ducati. And that's photo number 11. Look at photo 11. Guess who that is? That's me. And I'm just realizing this is probably the first time in my YouTube history that I've shown or said my name. So you all now know what my name is. Scotty Kinneman is my name. I'm in Delaware, not Wilmington, but close enough to Wilmington. So this is a 1 9th scale Ducati 996. And I built that, I built that years before I even knew anything about YouTube. And um, sent in my photo. They paid me 45 bucks for that photo. So this is my first published photo in uh, fine scale modeler and um so yeah i put a lot of time into that model i got it around here somewhere it's in storage maybe one of these days i'll pull it out and do a video on it because i do have to do some repair to it some parts got broken so maybe one of these days i'll pull that out and do some repairs on it and i had some photos in here um there's a helicopter i did now that that's motorized maybe i'll do a video on that too that's the same one just different background so that's a 148th scale that's all motorized. Does that look familiar? If any of you saw my YouTube short, um, I actually made two of those. One is detailed like that. The other one is right there in the actual helicopter. Um, so those are two different ones. Uh, this one has a motor in it. And this is sitting in the cockpit of a Cayman Husky at the Dover Air Force Base Museum. And I recently put out a short, a video, a YouTube short, showing that actually working when I went to the museum a few days ago. Um, but here's some more pictures of the motorcycle. Oh, that's an inside view of the detailed one. I made all the cargo net seating and everything for that. So again, I did that way before YouTube. Maybe I'll do a video on that. If anybody's interested, I'll do a video on this. It's already made, so it's not going to be a build video, but I can talk about it. Um, there's the bike. So more, more photos of the bike. Um, so just in case you didn't believe that was mine, there it is right there. Um, so anyways, I just had to show off a little bit, that's all. Um, but, but where I was going with all of that is, the world of Wayne, he started building the Diagasi 1 8 scale Jaguar. And when he got to the hood, oh, and by the way, again, as I was saying, I, I kind of got sidetracked there. As I was saying earlier, the way those parts works kits go is that each month you get a pack of parts in the mail. You'll get three or four parts or more and a magazine. The magazine has articles about the car and different cars. And then you put the few parts together. Then you got to wait for your next package to come in. The thing I don't like about those, I mean, it's a good idea because when it's all said and done, you've spent like 1500 bucks to $2,000, depending on what the car is, depending on what the model is. So I can understand who, who people who can't justify paying out two grand all at once, they can pay 30 bucks a month or whatever it is. Um, it just takes you a couple of years to get done. And also they'll send you like four or five parts and two of them you don't even use. You put those off to the side and you, you got to use those like in the next, the next uh, issue or something like that. So it's really kind of weird the way they do that. It's just kind of random on what parts you get. So you'll get parts for one wheel one month, three or four months later, you get parts for another wheel, and then the next month, it's just, it's just random, and it just seems odd. Plus, those kits, from what I've seen, they're all pre-painted, they're pre-detailed, you use very minimal glue. It's 95% just screwed together. So you get all these parts, and you just screw everything together. 
So it's not really the type of model making I like to do because I like to carve and cut and glue and scrape and paint and sand and file and, and actually build stuff. Where the part works gets, you're just assembling parts that are guaranteed to fit and you're just screwing them together, which is fine if that's what you like to do. I'm not trying to poo-poo it, um, for lack of a better phrase. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, say anything negative about it. It's just, for me, not the type of building I like to do. But they do look nice when they're done. Don't get me wrong. They do look nice. So anyways, I'm watching World of Wayne. And when he got the part for the hood, I'm like, that's perfect. That's, that's exactly what I need for this. Because that hood, all of the, uh, the, the vents here, they're cut through. So I went on eBay and I did a search for Dia, oh, it's Diagostini. I think I really mispronounced it earlier. Diagostini. I think that's right. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I mean, I could look it up. So I went on eBay and I looked up Diagostini, 1 8th Jaguar, and I found a hood. So I bought the hood. And there it is. So this is actually pack, I don't know, 26? I don't even know. Actually, that says your first parts. So I guess that's pack one. So this will be pack one. So in pack one, you get the hood. I'll pull that out later. You get a screwdriver, because like I said, it's all screwed together. And you get one of the wheel knockoffs. You gotta wait for several more months to get the other three. Uh, but you also get this piece here. Um, if I can get it out of there. You get this piece, which will eventually go right there. And you get this little um, I can't get that out of there. Hold on. You get this little emblem here. Still can't get that out. Here we go. You get that little emblem there, which goes into the front of that. That's not going to focus very well. I'm going to lose it. It's gone forever now. I will find that later. <laughs> so don't worry. I'll find it. But that's the... Oh, it's right here. I found it. See, I told you I'd find it. That's the little badge that goes into the center of that part there. I'm not even in view. All right, so I got that detail in there. But the reason why I bought this was for the hood. So let's take a look at the hood. Now this is metal, so it's actually very heavy, right? Very heavy. Not very heavy, but heavier than a plastic. But look, functional vents. How cool is that? They're, it's all... I'm assuming it's like die cast, whatever. But all of those vents are in. Notice they're not sunken in like those are. You'll also notice that it's pre-painted. The chrome strips here are already chromed. I'm assuming that's just paint, not real chrome. But, however, you'll notice there's no side pieces. So there's an obvious difference between these hood panels because there's no side pieces that go around the wheels. Now, I could get those. There's another... Um, pack or issue where I could buy this one. It's about 45 bucks. There's another one where I could buy this one. That's another 45 bucks. This one cost me 30 or 35. So if I buy the other packs, get the other two halves, well now I'm into this hood for 120 bucks. I don't mind being into the hood for 120. I mean, let me rephrase that. I don't mind being into the hood for 30 or 35. That ain't no way I'm going to pay 120 just for a hood. So the plan is, is to cut the sides off of this one. Cut that side off, cut that side off, and bond them onto the side of this. Now, you'll also notice that the ridges are not the same between the two. The ridges on the Diagostini hood are out about three millimeters from the monogram kit one. So I can't just cut where that line is. I can't just cut here. So I'm going to have to do a lot of careful measurements, cut it at the right spot, and then figure out how to bond it onto the side of this hood here. And um, yeah, it's kind of a shame that's not the entire hood, but that's fine. It's all it's fine. I'm not complaining. Um, now I am going to have to be careful because this one here, this is Monogram's idea of one eighth scale from like 30 years ago. This is Diagostini's version of 1 8 scale. They're probably not exactly the same. And if you look at the length, they're really close. They're really close. If you look at that edge profile like that, they're really close. They're not perfect, but they are really close. 
So even if I did buy these side pieces, it probably would not, it probably would not fit the rest of this. So it's probably a good thing I don't have the side pieces. Um, that, that will fit here like that, except for these pieces here, those pieces here, they interfere with my framework here. So I'm going to have to cut those off. So, and plus, remember what I said about these kits all being screwed together? Those big screw posts, I really doubt those are realistic to the real car. Um, so those will probably get shaved off. So right now I've got two options, I think. From what I see, I have two options. I can cut that off and then figure out how to bond it onto that edge. Or what I will probably do, I think what I'm leaning towards is cut this out here, right where, right where I'm drawing. Just cut that out, cut that out, then take that chunk and bond it into that chunk. Then I just have to feather in that edge. That's probably what I'll do. If any of you have any other ideas or suggestions, I'll read them in the comments. Put it in the comments. Now, having said that, if you leave me a suggestion on how to do this, I will read it and I will appreciate it, but I might not do it. If I don't use your suggestion, please don't get upset and offended. I had one guy several months ago get all mad at me and unsubscribe because I didn't use one of his suggestions. It's like, really? Come on. Um, so, like I said, I appreciate any comment, any suggestion you give. I may use it, I may not use it. I've used other people's suggestions before and I've ignored other people's suggestions before. But I'm always open to listening to new ideas and new thoughts. So right now, like I said, I'm thinking I'm going to cut this out and cut this out and then bond that piece right into here. That way I don't have to worry about the sides or the front not fitting. Also, the headlight openings are different sizes. Um, the headlight opening on this is a little bit bigger than the headlight opening on this. So that would be another thing I would have to figure out. So, um, so anyways, I have been rambling on way too long, I feel like. Um, but I just wanted to do this video because it's been a really long time since I've shown this, since I've done anything with this. I know a lot of you guys were following this build and were really into this build, and then all of a sudden I quit to do something else. So for one, I just wanted to throw it out there, say, say I'm not done with it. I'm still going to be working on it. I just have to finish the other build first. So we will be getting back to this. And I also wanted to share some new things that I found. So for all of the, all of you who are building one, you can you can use those same those same ideas that I found or those same things that I found. Oh, which reminds me, also on eBay, I found somebody is selling a battery. It's a more detailed Lucas battery. So I spent a lot of time modifying the kit part. If you remember from previous videos on the kit part, the edges were angled out so it would come out of the mold. So I cut all the corners and made them all square. I made the texture on the side and I put the letters that say Lucas on it, following photos of the real, of the real battery. Uh, and I added the little tabs on the side here. So I spent a lot of time modifying this. Well, on eBay, somebody is selling a resin battery that looks just like this. So that could save you a lot of time. Um, it's like 30 bucks though. So it depends. Do you want to spend 30 bucks or, or a couple of hours to get a result like this? Also, the heater box, this guy right here. I spent a ton of time modifying the kit part, putting the screen in here. There's actually a fan in there. I don't know with the lighting, you probably can't see the fan. There he goes, right there. You can kind of see the fan in there. Again, somebody is selling a resin kit with the screen and the fan. I don't know if theirs has that lever in the spring like I did here. I really don't know. Um, but again, it's about 30 bucks. So if you don't want to modify yours like I did, you can. that's 30 bucks for that. Now, personally, I enjoy that kind of work. I enjoy modifying and figuring out how to add new details. So for me, 30 bucks for a cast piece isn't, wasn't worth it for me. Uh, but it might be for you. It might be something you'd be interested in. So, um, so check eBay for some of those parts. Like I said, I've been rambling on way too much, way too long. So um, I'm going to leave this for now. The next video, we'll be back on the Mercedes. That's getting closer. Um, every, uh, every piece I put on it is getting one step closer. <laughs> but it feels like it's never going to end. So anyways, 
And until then, I'm going to stop talking. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.